Toucan Sam and a bottle of Jack? I've always been a sinner It's what my mom told me when I brought home Those dashboard and MX PX albums Cast it along undecently and thorns. This is Sex Positive Podcast for July the 9th, 2015. You guys were just listening to the band Author, and that is their song, Extraordinary. They are from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and they have one of their next shows on July the 21st in Omaha, Nebraska. Then they go on to Lawrence, Kansas, the kingdom and reign of uh, Mr. Matt Pryor himself from the Get Up Kids. And then they go on to Kansas City, Missouri, and then to Colorado Springs. So they're heading west after that. I hope you guys enjoy them. I really enjoy that they sound a lot like um, Mute Math from back in the day. So when Mute Math first put out their album, I think it was the Reset EP, they had left a band, they were in like a, uh, a rap Christian band before that then they decided to start a jam band and it's kind of what author reminds me of there's this really like free-flowing drumming patterns even though they may have like some different four-fourth stuff so this is new my recorder just cut out so now this is two audio files put together for sex positive podcast which is very interesting and fun so um what i was talking about is the fact that author really reminds me of mute math and their music is very free-flowing and able to go through a lot of different ideas in a certain amount of time, which is amazing. A lot of bands can't do that. They will take six to ten minutes to go through something, which is fine if that's what you're going for, but it's a very difficult process to be able to take a couple of minutes under three And then go through different time changes, go through different thoughts and ideas, and they're able to pull that off. And these guys aren't signed, so I was completely confused. Um, They're touring, they're on tour right now. Um, You guys can check them out at, where's their website? Weareauthor.bandcamp.com They are touring from... Omaha, to Lawrence, Kansas, to Kansas City, to Colorado Springs. Um, So you guys can check them out. Um, And their album is actually completely free, which I find completely amazing. Um, So they really understand how music works, in my opinion, the music industry. Um, And and that you really do have to play a lot of shows. You have to earn your own money um, in other ways other than selling your music because people will just put your music up on a torrent site and sell it because what are people going to do? They're going to share. We all like sharing. Um, so that's just, it is how it is. I, I appreciate that since they know what they're doing. 
I'm going to play for you guys um, Sexplanations on their episode, How to Know Your Body is Aroused. Tented! Did you know that tenting is a sign that the female's body is prepared for sex? What's tenting, you ask? Let's talk about how bodies get prepared for orgasmic relief. <coughs> Check out these two, William Masters and Virginia Johnson. They spent their entire sexology careers trying to figure out what happens when we get turned on and what to do when we don't. The Master Johnson study made it possible to follow the entire human sexual cycle from the first stirrings of erotic desire through orgasm to ultimate subsidence as objectively as 19th century physiologists had followed the digestive cycle from mastication to excretion. There are, of course, minor variations from individual to individual, but the basic pattern is still the same. Masters and Johnson welcomed participants into their labs by the hundreds to perform over 10,000 episodes of sexual arousal, masturbation, and coitus. Their findings became known as the human sexual response, a cycle of how we get turned on and stimulated both physically and psychologically. X-axis, Y-axis. The first stage is called excitement. This is when your heart rate starts increasing, breathing rate increases, blood pressure rises, nipples become erect and breasts enlarge, muscles tone up, the genitals engorge with blood like the labia, changing shape, getting bigger, flattening out, and spreading apart. The penis gets an erection, the blood vessels become more pronounced, and it can sometimes double in size. You've heard the phrase, it's a grower, not a shower, and you've got the testicles elevating and the scrotum around them thickening. The clitoris also gets an erection, and then it retracts underneath the clitoral hood, so if you're looking for it when you're turned on, it's a little harder to find. A sex flush occurs in 50 to 75% of biosex females and 25% of biosex males. This is a reddening of this part of the body and it will go away. Also part of excitement is the vagina preparing to take something into it. The walls lubricate and thicken. The cervix that separates the uterus from the vaginal canal is actually gonna lift up and move out of the way. This all works like an accordion. It makes more room for things, more than the three to five inches, and we call it tenting. It's generally a good idea to wait to penetrate until this point. Give attention to where your body is in this cycle. If you don't notice any cues, give it some more time and ask what it needs. The second stage is called plateau. Time is still passing, but the level of arousal is not changing very much. At this time, the vaginal walls continue to tighten. They create an orgasmic platform in the first third of the vagina, and this grips the object of insertion. The vagina, again, is gonna continue to tent, and other changes are going to occur as well. During this stage, though, more of the tending is gonna happen. Testicles raise up and enlarge by 50%. A gland called Cowper's releases precum, which clears the urinary pathway so that the urine that was there is no longer for the semen that is going to be there. I'll post a list of more physiological changes so that you can follow along with your body. I want you to be able to recognize these things so that you're aware of where you are in your cycle of arousal and you don't jump the gun. If you heat up like your microwave and your partner heats up like an oven, acknowledge this. Neither of you have to slow down or speed up. There is no moving through these stages too quick or too long. These are perceptions about how sexuality is supposed to be. Realistically, there isn't a too long or too short. There just is. And you decide whether or not to share that, resist it, or move on. Physiological compatibility is really important. It's also more probable the more creativity you incorporate. So after you guys watch that, I hope that you gain some different knowledge. You guys can check Dr. Doe out at Sexplanations, either on their website or on their YouTube, and I will link those in the show notes below. Um, she's really amazing, and she's a sexologist. She's usually an actual doctor, and she can explain ideas in a different way that I don't know because I'm not a sexologist, So, and not most of us are. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I got back some dating advice from my buddy Ronan. He is currently in Japan. And so I asked him, got any advice for dating Japanese girls? Here's what he says. They choose. Be subtle. You have to be subtle. It's a two-faced culture. Japanese culture has a public face, which they are polite and give you attention. Westerners mistake that for gals being into them which is really the opposite. They have a private face, which is what they really think. Knowing the language to a degree helps. Japanese culture is not direct. So this is from my buddy Ronan. He is an American in Japan, doing his thing, working and stuff like that. So I find it interesting um, when you're caught between two cultures. And for him, you know, he's he's Asian, but he's, you know, multiple 
um, I think he's Filipino, Chinese, and then white. And so I would assume for him that people wouldn't really understand what he is and would want to come up to him and talk to him directly in Japanese. And so it's an interesting thing for him because he's, you know, an American guy. And uh, I I don't know how much Japanese he knows. I know that he's not fluent. So um, that's an interesting prospect for someone out there. This is really cool. I found this group called uh, Semicolon. And what their mission is about is suicide prevention and opening up a conversation. And so um, it's a tattoo revolution. And so you get the semicolon tattoo on your hand or, you know, wherever you would get it on. And this is kind of their phrase. A semicolon is used when an author could have chosen to end their sentence, but chose not to. The author is you and the sentence is your life. I really like that. Like, that's so good. Like, it's it's just a, an amazing um, phrase. And um, I'm going to link their website down below. And um, the semicolon, it's a tattoo that has gained popularity in recent years. But unlike other random or mystifying trends, this one has serious meaning behind it. And no, it's not just a mark of a really committed grammar nerd. The mark represents mental health struggles and the importance of suicide prevention. Project Semicolon was born from a social media movement in 2013. They described themselves as a movement dedicated to presenting hope and love to those who are struggling with depression, suicide addiction, suicide addiction, and self-injury. Project Semicolon exists to encourage, love, and inspire. Only created as a day where people were encouraged to draw a semicolon on their bodies and photograph it, it quickly drew into something greater and more permanent. Today, people all over the world are tattooing the mark as a reminder of their struggle, victory, and survival. That's really amazing. And they're associated with the Agora Crisis Center. Um... I guess two of the founders um, work there. I'm not sure if they're agorists. That'd be pretty cool. Um, but it's a really positive movement and something that they're trying to open up dialogue and open up conversation where if someone's having a really shitty day or a really shitty life or you know, shitty world, um, they should be able to talk about it. It shouldn't be something where you hide it and it's it's bad. And as well with, with the mental health, it shouldn't be something that's bad. Or something that should be shunned away. And also, especially, hopefully they are an agorist movement where there is no violence included. So if you go to a doctor and you talk to that person, you should be able to talk to them without the threat of violence. Because that's not something that should be accepted in our society. And most of the mental health industry, in my opinion, is based on commercialization and not on love of others and a nonviolent institution. So hopefully, um, that is, and, you know, if you got need people to talk to you guys can always call up me and some of the other people that assist in the uh, the podcast as well we'd certainly be willing to uh take time and talk to you and semicolon to all around the world So my friend is involved in this project called The Eventual Outcome of an Instant. Uh, You can check out their community page, which I have linked in the show notes. Um, The eventual outcome of an incident between mid-August and mid-September, the Seligam, Seligam, I don't know how to say that, Seligam Center will work with artist Sue Werbicon to erect a series of site-specific community-built sculptures throughout the grounds. Imagined by Werbicon, 
the sculptures are inspired by forms in K. Sage paintings. Sage was a close friend of Kurt Seligamon and spent considerable time on the homestead. The sculptures will be composed of natural materials harvested by members of the community. Construction will take place over the course of four weekends between mid-August and mid-September with Rubicon and her students working alongside volunteers from the community. My friend was telling me about this, and it's just completely amazing. Um, from the picture that they already have of one of the sculptures that are already up, um, it's just it puts art in, in real life and not just on a piece of paper, which I find is just amazing. Um, and kind of the passion that um, that they have to do this. Um, you guys can check that out. So when you get in, uh, involved in, you guys can join up and go see it and go help with it. It's a living art and uh, it seems pretty cool to me. I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. Be safe on your journeys and enjoy some awesome scotch or fantastic beer. I actually had a beer that I haven't had in a long time. It was from Duclaw and uh, their beer, Sweet Baby Jesus. It's a peanut butter porter and it is amazing. You guys would totally love it. Please enjoy the rest of author music, and you can check out their music. Please check them out if you're going to Colorado or you're in Kansas. Um, you guys can see them and kind of envision a, a new world of music. Just throw all you, you have, have awesome away. Cascade moons and wander Do you ever feel like packing your bag And turning all away? Stops passing miles by miles. Find a redemption in ourselves to move on, to move on, to move on, to move on, to move on. Never bring me back, back down.